One of the most surprising moments of the 2021 playoffs was when the Green Bay Packers lost their first round matchup after having a bye against the San Francisco 49ers. They seemed almost unstoppable during the regular season. Not only were they healthy, but they were getting a lot of their stars back and they had MVP Aaron Rodgers at the helm and they still came up short. And since that moment, there hasn't been much said about the Packers that was all that positive. It seems that everyone has collectively decided just to write them off and move on to more interesting and things to discuss. But where are they now? They eventually got Roger's contract done so they know he'll be back, but they did lose their star on offense and top two, not two receiver in the league, Devontae Adams. So are the Packers dead? Could they bounce back and make another run with the roster they have in their upcoming draft picks? Or has there already been too much damage done? Well, I'm not going to definitively answer yes or no, because in like most things in life, the answer is it depends. And I'm not satisfied at leaving it that. So I did my due diligence to actually give you guys a proper breakdown of the Packers current situation. And so in today's video, we're going to be laying out two paths for the Packers, one in which I see them being successful, making all the right moves and coming back with a vengeance and being right back in the running contending in the NFC. And then we'll cover a path where I could see them making mistakes and pointing out where they could go wrong and they could slip all the way out of being a top four team in the NFC and not having much of a chance come playoff time. There's obviously a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. And before we get into our hypotheticals, we need to quickly understand some of the things that for sure already happened. Since we last saw the pack take the field, most notably, they lost Devontae Adams, MVS, center Lucas Patrick, Billy Turner, Chandler Sullivan, and Zadarius Smith. But on the other side of things, they most notably will have David Bakhtiari returning, which is massive because he's one of the best left tackles in the league and he didn't play all but a few snaps last season. They re-signed Robert Tunyon and Rasul Douglas, Devondre Campbell, and Preston Smith. They brought in Sammy Watkins and Keyshawn Nixon and got some really nice draft picks in the Devontae Adams trade. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into the video and start having some fun. And on this channel, we are all about positivity. Well, I guess until later in this video, but let's start out being optimistic. And firstly, I think their defense was definitely a strong suit on their team last season, and I thought they were going to be completely deteriorated given their cap situation. However, I was pleasantly surprised because it seemed they have most of their returning pieces and can take off running where they left off last year. And before we get to the offense, which is probably the biggest question mark for everyone, the thing that was the biggest weakness all last season on their team and eventually lost them a playoff game was their absolute dog shit special teams play. And they made a massive move bringing in Rich Bisaccia to be their special teams coordinator, one of the best in the league, and he is coming off being an interim head coach for the Raiders as he led them to the playoffs with almost nothing going right beforehand. So with the defense not losing any significant pieces besides Zadarius Smith and their special teams making improvements, let's get to the offense. And again, we are talking about what I think they should do to be successful. First of all, we need to talk about the Sammy Watkins signing because it was unexpected and maybe underwhelming at first glance, but I saw a post that showed since 2019 the top five highest ranked run blocking wide receivers in the NFL and the Packers now have two of them, and Julio's still out there. So if we know who the Packers are and what they've been the past decade, I think it might be time for them to change their approach. Because they have a two-headed monster in the backfield with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, and they have a very good offensive line, and they will always have the threat with a back-to-back -back MVP behind center. They could be a very successful team just running the ball. Okay, but let's talk about the Devontae Adams and their current receiving situation. And since we're looking at it in a positive manner, it might be a blessing in disguise. Aaron Rodgers has a mind-boggling 10-1 record without Devontae Adams in the lineup. Now, let me make this very clear. I think people see this and just assume that the Packers are a better football team without Tay. Now, try and make that make sense to me. How can you be a better team without the best receiver in football? It must be something else. I think it's impossible to be a better team without Adams out there, but they might play better football when he's not out there. Let me explain. The perfect example of this is Odell Beckham Jr. on the Browns. Odell is a celebrity and obviously an amazing wide receiver. Baker would try and get it to him and it became very inorganic and forced. And when he got hurt, Baker spread it out more and the team had a lot more success. Now let's look at Odell on the Rams. The same great football player joins the team, but the style of the football that the Rams played didn't change. They just had a much better 
better Z receiver in their lineup. That is the difference. And the 49ers exposed the Packers for this in the playoffs. Niners cornerback Traverius Ward went on a podcast and broke down how they played the Packers defensively. They would always decide their coverage to make it look like Devontae was on one-on-one -on -one coverage and rotate late and sometimes even post-snap to bracket or move a safety over the top. They knew that Devontae would always be Aaron's first read pre-snap. And so almost every play Rodgers got on his first read and then had to pass it up. And this allowed the pass rush to gain an advantage as Rodgers always had to move through his progression. So even losing the best receiver in football is devastating and they would do magical things on the field together. It might allow or even force them to play a better overall and more balanced style of football. But now let's talk about the draft because they have two first round draft picks that we need to talk about. And for all the love of all things holy, even me being a Lions fan and the Packers being in my division I don't think I could bear to see the Packers go another year, this time with two first round picks and not take a receiver. Even though they'll be able to use some of the amazing talent out there with the guys that still might be available, like Devontae Wyatt, N'Kobe Dean, Devin Lloyd, Daxton Hill, who, sneak peek, might be the most underrated player defensively, and there's a video coming out on him soon, or even a guard like Zion Johnson. Any one of these guys would be great on the Packers, but one, if not both, of these picks need to be a receiver and not just to please Aaron Rodgers or Packers fans but because it's what they need so to break it down not saying Aaron Rodgers needs to take a back seat or anything because he's still a top four quarterback in the league and back-to-back -back MVP he's exceptional at protecting the football and has the arm talent to make any throw imaginable so all that being considered they still have a good offensive line two elite running backs their defense is solid and returned a lot of key pieces their special teams will hopefully be much improved with a top coordinator in the league at the helm now and they have a top quarterback who now I'm not saying has the freedom but has adequate receivers and tight ends barring that they can at least draft one in the first round to spread out and make throws when they need to and I think the spot they're in they can go out and get a Christian Watson a George Pickens a Jahan Dotson or maybe even a Traylon Burks go best available go best fit and if they can do all of this add a first round talent at linebacker defensive line they're going to be right back as a top three seed in the NFC and have to be respected and feared going in the playoffs to make a run. Now, let's look at the flip side of this. The Packers could absolutely sell if they do a few things wrong. One, if they don't change their perspective or mentality who they are as a team, or two, absolutely botch the draft like they did two years ago. To me, they can't see themselves as a pass first team anymore, which is crazy having a Rodg back there, but they have decent weapons, but now they don't have that one guy that consistently win one-on-one -on -one matchups to go out there, spread it out, and throw it 40 times a game. That's what they're losing in Devontae Adams. If teams truly did leave their corner on an island one-on-one -on -one with Tay, he would win 95% of the time. They just don't have that luxury anymore. They need to find their identity more similarly to who the Browns and Titans are, but now with just a much, much better quarterback than what they have. Pound the ball, control the clock, play good defense, take care of the ball, and then you can have your MVP quarterback bail you out when one of those four things goes wrong. And if they go into the season without finding their identity or choose the wrong one, it could be a very long season of clunky and awkward looking games. And if they bomb the draft, AKA don't go out and get a receiver, because even with everything I said earlier, they need a receiver steal and a good one at that. This could be a long season for Aaron Rodgers and they could see themselves with another winning season more than likely win the division and another early playoff exit. But the more I thought about this topic, the more optimism I found myself having in them. I had to block out everything I've heard from the media so far because everyone is already writing them off and looking to crown a replacement after one trade and one bad playoff game. But I started to realize they're a lot closer than people think and might only become better as time goes on if they continue to adapt to their roster and make improvements to fit whatever their goals are as a team. Obviously, there is a long offseason and season ahead of us, so we will have time to come back to this topic. But as of right now, I think we need to be looking at the Packers a little bit differently. And if you like the NFL and you were on the side that Packers are 100% dead and have no chance to make any noise, I hope that I could at least show you that there are two sides of the story. And if they do things right, there is going to be a chance. But that's what I think. Now I want to open it up to you guys to tell me
me what you guys think. Make sure to like this video if you like videos like these. Make sure to comment down below what you think of the Packers, whether you're a Packers fan. Just don't be overly optimistic or pessimistic. Obviously, there's two things. What would you like to see the Packers do? Go out and always make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.